And joining us now, former NFL and BYU linebacker David Nixon, one of our current BYU TV analysts. Uh, David, this has been a really intriguing 24 hours as this news has come out. BYU is unique in that this is the first time they have faced these type of major allegations. Why do you feel like BYU has been able to stay unique that way and avoid previous instances like this? Well, because BYU is BYU, and uh, BYU is very cautious in everything they do. Um, you mentioned earlier how uh, they've got compliance people in their office that that, that is their sole job is to ensure that the student-athletes are in compliance with the NCAA rules. And um, I remember during my day, uh, in fact, my senior year, I was declared ineligible for a couple weeks. What? Uh, because this is the big, right, right during uh, fall camp, because I'd been involved in uh, like a little magazine thing where I helped out a buddy uh, take some pictures and stuff, and they published this little magazine with me on the cover, and next thing I know, I'm getting called up by compliance, and they were self-reporting it. Um, saying that I was endorsing a magazine, which you can't do as an athlete. And so they declared me ineligible before my senior season for a few weeks. They petitioned to the NCAA. The NCAA reviewed it and uh, cleared me. So, uh, you know, two weeks later, I was good to go. But those are some stressful two weeks. But once again, you know, that's BYU. And this is something they do, honestly, probably, I, I don't know for sure, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that monthly they're self-reporting little infractions like this that really aren't that big of a deal. And that's how I kind of look at this current situation. Um, I don't see it being this doomsday, end-of-the-world type deal for BYU sports. Um, I think this is something that, once again, BYU self-reported. They, they've been going at this for a few months. They've been doing um, you know, this investigation. They've been reviewing all the facts. And uh, I'm sure that everything will come out fine. So you're at DEFCON 5. DEFCON 5 being the least. <laughs> I okay. am at DEFCON 5. Okay. I, I am a DEFCON 5. Yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> David Nixon is on BYU Sports Nation. I want to dig more into your experience as BYU Cougar. You just outlined, you know, you were declared ineligible by the NCAA. Uh, how well informed uh, were you made aware of all the different rules that you had to abide by as a BYU football player? You know, they, they talk about it every year. Before, whenever fall camp rolls around, the compliance officers come down, and for a few hours they explain what you can and cannot do. And they lay it out there. It's very black and white. Um, and to be honest, you look at the rules, and it's, it's just, I mean, they're pretty simple. Don't accept extra uh, benefits from anyone else outside the program. Where it becomes gray is, okay, did I know this person previous to coming to BYU? Are they family members? Are they extended family? And so when it comes to these meals um, that oftentimes players get or, or, or they get invited to a, you know, a jazz game and get to sit courtside, was that a, is that a booster or was that your friend you knew previously to come to BYU? So. Uh, there is some gray area in that, and, and that's why the BYU compliance guys urge us always, hey, just check with us, let us know what you're doing, um, and we can kind of you know, keep tabs on it. But uh, it's pretty cut and dry, but at the same time, there is some gray area because of um, you know, what, what type of relationship is that? Is that a personal relationship that you've had before, or is it a you know, BYU booster that's giving you extra benefits? And, and so I think that's where sometimes the gray area comes in. But you know, it, it, it's really tough. You, you, look at, you look at some of these infractions, uh, that people are uh, alleging, and you know, some of it comes down to extra meals and 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 you know, uh, being able to stay to over somebody's house for for a little while, you know, longer than they probably should have. But um, you know, free room board. But it's it's for me, I think it's all pretty minimal um, considering the, the the larger scheme where you look at guys getting free cars and uh, all all sorts of stuff. So. I don't know. I, once again, I, I'm optimistic this will work out at BYU. When you self-report it, you're always kind of ahead of the curve. Um, so I, I'm, I'm confident that uh, you know, they'll, they'll present the facts in the NCAA and, and things will kind of blow over. David Nixon, BYU TV football analyst, former BYU and NFL linebacker joining us. You mentioned that you were in this conversation with compliance for a few hours. I mean, out, they spent hours talking to you about these rules? What does that say about yeah, the current status of the NCAA and what's what's going on in that rule book? Yeah, it's it's amazing. The rule book is very thick, and I'll be honest, we didn't read the rule book. What basically what compliance would do was go thank through and yeah, thank goodness we didn't have time to read it. But um, they would go through and kind of just outline the the main points of, of what you should and shouldn't do. And um, once again, I mean it's it's pretty it's pretty simple. They're outlining simple things of you can't take money, you can't take cars. And, and I don't think that's what's happened in this situation. I think there was a very, very minor infractions. But once again, BYU is BYU, and they have to make sure all their I's are dotted and T's are crossed, so they're going to make sure 
that if there are if there is anything that's somewhat in that gray area and and somewhat close to that line, they're going to report it. They're going to do a full investigation and make sure they clear themselves because they do you know they do not want to be in the limelight for the wrong reasons. David, you mentioned the gray area a couple of times. What were some of those gray areas that you're you're hinting at? Yeah, I, mean, kind of, I kind of alluded to it earlier with the, with the free meals um, with with friends or or you know uh, or extended family. Sometimes boosters. Sometimes people would give you a free meal. You go to a restaurant and uh, next thing you know you're getting your tab picked up for, and you're like, oh, thanks a lot. Or stuff like free golf. I mean, uh, it, it uh, sometimes you go to pay for your golf, and you know the pro the, the pro golf there the golfer says, hey, I got I got this for you. Um, so it, there, there's little stuff like that. Uh, honestly, it, it doesn't happen a lot. Um, but when you're in BYU and, and Provo, um, you know, a lot of people recognize the, the, the star football players and they sometimes give them, you know, some preferential treatment and it happens in every college town across America. I mean, all these athletes are, are, are being treated like this, but I think where you start to worry is once again, where you're getting those, you know, maybe cars or, uh, some guys like jewelry, they're getting free jewelry. I mean, I, I think there's a line that can be crossed, but I, I don't see that being the problem here at BYU with this current investigation. I think there were very minor, minor infractions um, that uh, you know finally came to light, and they decided to put into it, and uh, and that's where we kind of find ourselves. David, how difficult was it for you when you were playing football at BYU to stay loyal to all of these NCAA regulations? Because I'm thinking about myself. Isn't Someone the says, honor code hard hey, enough? Hey, uh, <laughs> play play free golf. Like I'm yeah. thinking, sweet, okay. Yeah. And, it's an afterthought to me to even think to even tie that to the NCAA. So a kid that's between the age of 18 and 24, how difficult was that for you? I'll be honest, it's tough. But you, you got to remember, I wasn't I wasn't Max Hall, I wasn't Des Pitt, I, wa- I wasn't the uh, offensive guys. I feel like they always got the extra benefits. You played but... in the NFL. <laughs> extra <laughs> no. benefits, or were offered extra benefits? <laughs> no, I listen. I, I it, it, it was tough. But once again, you you had to stop and qu- ask yourself, hey, am I am I breaking rules right now or not? And um, oftentimes you had to tell people, no, I, I, thanks, but, uh, no thanks. And, and you had to reject some offerings and it gets actually pretty awkward because here, here's somebody trying to help right. you out and yeah. you have to tell them, no, this um, is an NCA rule and I will abide by it. Yeah, exactly. You sound like a fruit, although that's the rule. <laughs> exactly. And especially as a college kid. I mean, that, it's, it's super nice to have those extra benefits, but, um, at some point you've got to say no, but, uh, honestly, guys, I, I think across America, uh, these infractions, these smaller ones are being broken every day, and, and they really are minimal. But um, I think at any other university, this probably wouldn't have been reported, uh, what, what's, being, what's going on right now. Um, but because it's BYU, uh, they, they want to make sure, like I said earlier, they want to make sure that everything's tightened up and okay, that so, there's, there's so, no gray line. So tell me this, David. BYU is currently the only Division One program to win a national championship in the AP era without major allegations. Violations. Violations. Sorry. Major violations. In your mind, does this now take BYU out of that conversation? No, I don't think so, I, because nothing's been proven yet. Uh, the, the NCAA hasn't made any ruling. Once again, we're still at that phase where BYU is reporting themselves. So until the NCAA comes back and says, here are your violations, I look at this, once again, like Jeremy just said, our allegations. I look at it as um, something very minimal and something that's uh, not that big of a deal. But uh, you know, if the NCA and well, I guess when they come back and, and have a ruling, um, then I think that's a whole different conversation to have. But up till now, I, I really do think this is uh, going to pass. I mean, I, 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 I know the parties involved, and, uh, and I, I think that after everything comes out, that uh, it will be looked at as something that, you know, what wasn't as big of a deal as, as the national media is making it to be right now. David Nixon is on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, I want to ask you this. Your brother-in-law is Taysom Hill. You mentioned that the offensive guys uh, get more pub or offers for these kinds of things. How, do you, how have you helped Taysom maybe be aware of, hey, you, you need to watch out for these kind of situations to make sure you're compliant? Yeah, and Taysom's a smart kid, and he, he's obviously very aware of it. And I think you know, the compliance and those guys are even more aware with him uh, as, as you know, the quarterbacks here at BYU are usually uh, – and align my little more, but he's a smart kid. He understands what's going on. We've discussed it a few times of, of stuff he's had to reject and turn down because uh, it could potentially give him in trouble. So, um, and he's, I think, you know, after talking to him, he's, he's talking to compliance weekly, making sure that, uh, you know, being invited to certain events, that that's NCAA compliance. So um, I, I don't see there being any issue there. And I think, like I said, most of the guys at BYU are smart. The last thing any athlete wants to do to BYU is put them in a bad limelight and, and penalize them and you know, get take scholarships taken away or 
postseason um, bowl games taken away. So every every kid's cautious because they know that it will directly affect them if if they do mess up. Um, and then once again, the coaches, uh, coaching staff are on top of it, compliance on top of it. Um, I think BYU obviously does. They, they have the system down. They, they've done a great job up till now of being clean and and making sure that you know things are under wraps. Um, but uh, you know this is one of those instances where. At BYU's reported, and we'll we'll see how it plays out. But uh, once again, I, I think at the end of the day, this will be something that the NCAA kind of looks at. Much like my instance, they looked at it and kind of laughed at it, um, and they said, "Yeah, he's he's fine. He, he's definitely good to play, and uh, everything was fine." So I, I think right now it's a big deal. But I, my guess is here in a month or two, um, things will kind of cool down. Does it not say something about BYU when you look at the kind of reaction this got nationally? that this is such a big deal. I mean, to me, that screams, wow, we're shocked because BYU is the squeaky clean held to kid. a higher standard. They've, is. they've done things the right way. So, yeah, it's shocking. But is, in a way, is, is that not putting BYU up there and saying, yeah, they've, they're doing it right? They're yeah, doing it right. I agree. I, I agree. It's almost, like a co- it right, yeah. It's, yeah, it's almost like a compliment, right, that the national media is making such a big deal out of something that we self-reported. Um, you know that not that the NCA came after us, but we something we we went to the NCA with, and the fact that they're blowing this up to be what it is, um, I agree. I, I think it's something that uh, you know everyone's trying to find that that chink in the armor, and and and, and this is one of those instances where um, you know people are trying to expose us, but once again BYU's on top of it. They've been ahead of it, ahead of the curve for the last few months. They've been doing their own investigation, um, and so you know they're, they're on top of it. And once again, I'm, I'm interested to see what what they find. And what they come out with, uh, but I'm uh, I'm optimistic that that all will be well, and and uh, this season and, and going forward won't be affected. David Nixon at DefCon Five. Hey, great to talk to you, man. We appreciate the insight and the uh, the look into the program. Yeah, thanks, guys.